In this video, we're going to look at the bubble sort. The bubble sort, like the quick sort, is an algorithm that allows us to order data sets. It's called the bubble sort as the largest values rise to the end of the list. When we carry out a bubble sort, we write out the data set we're given in the order that it appears. So that data set might be numbers that we need to put in ascending order. It might be names that we need to put in alphabetical order. What we're going to do is look at carrying out a bubble sort. We take the list of items or the data set and make comparisons. Once we've compared all of the values in that data set, we've completed one full pass. The wording of exam questions will determine how you answer them. And what we're going to do is look at a couple of examples and the way questions might be worded. So we're asked to sort the following numbers in ascending order. We're going to use a bubble sort. Ascending means that we're going from smallest to largest. Descending the other way. So all I'm going to do is write this out now in the order that we're given. We're going to do 3, we're going to do 2, we're going to do 10, we're going to do 6, we'll have 8, 5, 12 and 7. There are a couple of different ways questions are worded. If we're asked to do comparison by comparison, we need to go through the list and compare on each row the term next to the first one, or the first free one. If we're asked to do pass by pass, pass by pass is going to take us less time. So do check what you're being asked to do. On the first pass, I'm going to carry out the comparison by comparison method. Once I've done one full pass, I'm just going to switch to pass by pass. So let's do comparison by comparison. The first two values we're going to compare are 3 and 2. We want this in ascending order. 2 is less than 3, so I'm going to rewrite my list. 2, 3, 10, 6, 8, 5, 12 and 7. I'm being very careful right now to ensure that these are in line. Our next comparison is 3 and 10. These are not going to change. 3 is less than 10, so we write it out again. 2, 3, 10, 6, 8, 5, 12 and 7. Each time we go through a full pass, one of these values will be in the correct place. So, once I've gone right the way through, the largest number will be at the end. If we have n items in our data set, we need to carry out n minus 1 passes to ensure that they're in order. Now, the idea of n minus 1, we will do n minus 1, but we will actually do n passes, as the final pass will be exactly the same as the one before. So, let's go ahead and do this. 10 and 6, are we swapping those? The answer is yes. 2, 3, 6, 10, 8, 5, 12 and 7. So, still keeping them nicely in line, we're going to compare the next ones. 10 and 8, we need to swap these over. 8 comes before 10, 2, 3, 6, 8. Then we've got 10 and we've got 5, we've got 12 and we've got 7. Now, with a bubble sort, as any sorting algorithm, it's often tempting to say, I could just write these out. It's obvious what they are. We know what the list is and which order it should go in. Remember, we're not being tested on doing that. You'll get no marks in the exam if you simply write it in order. We're working like a computer would work, and the computer will be working with massive data sets. So, if you're tempted just to write it out, appreciate you're going to get no marks and your teacher is going to probably look at you and um, be slightly annoyed. So let's go ahead. Next comparison, 10 and 5. So 2, 3, 6, 5, 10, uh, sorry, 8, let's put that there. 8, 5, 10, then we've got the 12 and we've got the 7. Next comparison, 10 and the 12, 2, 3, 6, 8, then we've got the 5. We don't need to swap these over. These are in order. 12 and 7. OK, final comparison, 12 and 7. So we can see that we're going to swap these over. So we're going to get now 2. We're going to get 3. We're going to get 6. We're going to get 8. We're going to get 5. We're going to get 10. We're going to get 7. And we're going to get 12. I'm now going to write here, end of first pass. End of first, so let's write there, right first pass. This ensures now that the 12 is in the correct place. So I've done this pass comparison by comparison. As you can see, if I went through this again, it would be an absolute nightmare. 
Therefore, what I'm going to do is switch to the second method of doing pass by pass. We don't need to do each of these. We simply consider now if these are in order. Is two less than three? Yes, it is. So we're going to have now two. We now need to compare the three and the six. We know that three comes before six, so that is in the correct place. Is six before eight? Yes, it is. Is eight before five? No. So what I'm going to do is swap these over. So the five goes there. I'm now comparing the eight with the ten. So is eight bigger than ten? The answer is no. I'm now going to compare the ten and the seven. Seven is less than ten, so seven is going to come. So this time you can see that we're actually jumping a couple of steps here. Technically we're not but we're comparing now more than one term. So we've now got the uh, comparison of 10 and 12. We can see that 12 is already locked down, so we would just write this. So it's 10 and 12. End of second pass. So end of second pass. And you just have to keep on top of what you're doing here. So these are now in order. So after the second pass, we've got two items that are in the correct position. Let's go again. Two and the three, not gonna swap them. 3 and the 6, not going to swap them. 6 and the 5, we are. Now 6 and the 8, we're not. We then come to 8 and 7. Yes, we are. We're swapping those over. We come to 8 and 10. We know we're not going to swap them because 10 is already locked down. We know we're not going to swap these as they're already locked down. So we've got now end of third pass. So end of third pass. So 12 is in place. 10 is in place. 8 is in place. So you can see each time I'm carrying out a pass, I've got one more item in the correct position. As stated, we will carry out a maximum of n minus 1 passes, and then on the nth pass, these will be in order. That's the maximum. So I'm going to have to carry out a maximum of 8. So after the 7th, it's going to be in order. The 8th confirms it will be in order as I've got 8 pieces of data. That is the maximum, though. As you can see from here, it looks like we're going to do it a lot before that. So let's go again. 2, we're not swapping. 3 and 5, we're not swapping. 5 and 6, we're not swapping. 6 and 7, we're not swapping. And clearly now, 7 and 8 are going to be in place. This has been very kind to me. If we now look, this is the end of the fourth pass. So after the end of the fourth pass, we can see that these two are the same. End of third pass, end of fourth pass are the same. So end of third, so let's just write this here, is equal to the end of fourth. So what we can say then now, no changes. There are no changes in that pass. I've seen that these are now in order. No changes. Therefore, we can say end of bubble sort. So end of bubble sort. And we'll just write this to the examiner. And we can say now numbers in order or ascending order. So let's write that there, ascending order. So if you cut this short here, you'll get one mark docked, possibly two, depending on the mark scheme. This is not the end of the bubble sort. We need to show that there are no changes now by doing the next pass. So we can see end of third pass is equal to the end of the fourth pass, no changes. End of bubble sort, numbers in ascending order, and we're done. So as stated, if you've got n items here, we're going to do a maximum of n minus 1 passes until they're all in order, and then the nth pass confirms that it's the same as the n minus 1 pass. So there we go, that's now sorted. So up to here, I did comparison by comparison. I've then gone on to pass by pass. If you can do pass by pass straight off, you can see that that's going to be a lot easier. So do check what you're being asked to do. OK, let's go ahead and do the next one. Sort the following letters in alphabetical order. We've got P, B, G, H, E, R, U, M, D and L. If you're panicking in an exam or the adrenaline's going, just write out the alphabet. Often it's easy to slip up on these letters, less so with numbers. The usual mistake with the numbers is to put them in the wrong order. So, for example, ascending versus descending. Ascending is getting bigger, descending is getting smaller. Often, or sometimes, students may get the two mixed up if they're panicking. So, let's go now and we'll do the comparison by comparison method. P, B, G, H, then we've got E, we've got now R, so let's check that I'm writing all of these out. 
U, M, D and L. And again, the thing to do if you really want to annoy your teacher is say, well, I know what order they're going in anyway. If you want to do that, cool, tell them that, you'll get no marks and they'll probably dislike you for a long period of time. It's uh, highly frustrating. Okay, we're going in alphabetical order. So let's do comparison by comparison. First comparison is P with B. B comes before P, so I'm just going to rewrite my list now. G, H, E, then we've got R, we've got U, M, D and L. And again, I'm keeping these nicely in order so I don't stray. P and G. Uh, I'm just going to go through there so it looks like I didn't make a mistake. Do we need to swap these over? Yes, we do. So B, G, P. Then we've got now the H, we've got the E, we've got R, U, M, D and L. Okay, next one. P and H. Do we need to swap those? H comes before P, so yes we do as we're in alphabetical order. Um, I've yet to see one which is reverse alphabetical order and I really would have to get the alphabet written out purely based on the fact that um, you, it's possible to make mistakes. Shouldn't really, but highly likely, especially if the adrenaline is going M, D and L. Okay, next one, let's consider now P and E. You can see that these are overlapping and that's why I like to keep these in a nice row. B and P, G and P, H and P. So let's compare these two. We need to swap these over. B, G, H. Then we've got E, we've got P, we've got R, U, M, D and L. Next one, P and R. Again, just be careful. This is one that uh, I've I had to momentarily think about. So let's put B just there. G, H, E. P comes before R. So let's put P, R, U, M, D and L. Okay, R and U, we don't need to swap those over. So B, G, H, E, then we've got P, we've got R, we've got U, we've got M, D and L. Okay, we'll now compare the U and the M, and of course we're going to swap these over, and hopefully you can see by the end of the first pass, this U is going to end up at the end and in its correct position. As now, the letter that's further uh, the furthest into the alphabet of all of ours. So P, R, M, U, D, L. Okay, next one, U and D. So let's have a look at those. So B, G, H, E, P, R, M, and then we got D, U, and L. Uh, D, U, L, dull. Um, you might argue that that's quite apt for doing comparison by comparison, but I think once you get into it, it's actually quite enjoyable. Um, but again, it might keep you amused for a few seconds. Um, so here we go. What we what we compare now the U and the L. So that's what we've got. And this again is the comparison by comparison method. B G H E. Then we've got P. We've got R. We've got M. We've got D. We've got L. And we've got U. End of first pass. So end of first pass. So let's put that there. So that's comparison by comparison. I'm now going to switch up to pass by pass. So if we need to show that we know how to implement the bubble sort, this is showing the examiner we know how to do comparison by comparison. So let's now go to pass by pass. Do we need to swap B and G? The answer is no. Do we need to swap G and H? The answer is no. Do I need to swap H and E? The answer is yes. Do I need to swap H and P? The answer is no. Do I need to swap now P and R? The answer is no. Do I need to swap R and M? The answer is yes. Now, be careful here. Do I need to swap R and D? The answer is yes. Do I need to swap R and L? The answer is yes. Now, we know this is already locked down. Therefore, R will appear here and U will appear here end of second pass. So end of second pass. U is in place, U and R are in place. Okay, do we need to swap B and G? The answer is no. G and E, yes we do. G and H, no. H and P, no. P and M, N, O, P, so yes we do. M, N, O, P, so we're going to swap those over. We now consider P and D. Yes, we do need to swap them. 
we're going to consider P and L. Yes, we do need to swap them, and P slots in nicely just there. So end of third pass. So third, let's write this here. How many letters have I got? This is in order, that's in order. I've got 10. So once I get to completing my ninth pass, that's the maximum I could go to. And then the tenth would confirm exactly the same thing. By the looks of it, we're not going to be going up that far, but it is something for you to consider. So if you're on to your 12th or 13th pass, perhaps you need to look at where you've gone wrong. B, don't need to swap B and E. Don't need to swap E and G. We don't need to swap G and H. We don't need to swap H and M. We do need to swap D and M. We do now need to consider M and L. So L comes before M. Then we've got M. Of course, we know P is locked down. We know R is locked down. And we know U is locked down. So end of fourth pass. So U is in place. R is in place. P is in place. L, uh, sorry, M is in place, and now we're going to go for the fifth pass. So, do we need to swap over B? No. E? No. G? No. Now, we're not swapping G with H, but we are swapping H with D. D. Are we swapping H with L? The answer is no, so we've now got another pass complete, or if you like, iteration. So, end of pass five or fifth pass that's right fifth pass and that's done u is in place r p m l i like doing this as well because you can kind of see that our list is getting smaller and smaller and we're comparing less and less items do we need to swap b and e no e and g no g and d yes g and h no so now we're locking another value down or another uh, letter which is going to be H P R U end of six pass so end of six pass U is in place I is in place P is in place M L now we've got H in place so hopefully I've got all of those in so I'm just adding one each time so there's three there's four there's five there's six so after the six pass we can see now that we've got these values in place okay let's go again do we need to swap B with E, no. D with E, yes. E with G, no. So we now simply write out, and this is as well why I like to do it, because we know once we're past this stage, we're not still comparing these, okay? So this is now the end of seventh pass. So what have we got? U, R, P, M, L, H, and now G is. So let's go ahead and do our eighth pass. Do we need to swap B and D? The answer is no. Do we need to swap D and E? The answer is no. And this is going to work out just perfect. L, M, P, R, U. So, end of eighth pass. And we can now say, so let's just write this here. We can say now end of seventh pass is equal to end of... Of, and you might want to write end, I'm being a bit lazy. We can see from here, no changes. Therefore, in order, end bubble sort. So just writing it down, end bubble sort, letters in alphabetical order. I mean, we got it just here, it doesn't really matter. Let's just write some here in alphabetical order. And do go ahead and check them. B, D, E, G, H, L, M, P, R, U. And they are. So there we go. That is now a bubble sort with 10 now items. I've done up to here. So up to here, up to the end of the first pass is done comparison by comparison. So after the end of the first pass, I'm done. I'm now switching up to the method of pass by pass considering these. It's slightly trickier because you're jumping often two or three spaces, if not more. So just be careful. Just make sure you're comparing the one straight after it. So there we go. That's a bubble sort. It's another sorting algorithm along with the quick sort.